Welcome to this enablement video for VMware Cloud and AWS. My name is Jonathan McDonald, and I'm a Senior Solutions Architect from the Professional Services Engineering team here at VMware. Our team creates standardized services for VMware Professional Services field staff. Because VMware Cloud and AWS is so new, we thought it would be a good idea to show you our progress as we are developing our content. Today, Brent Douglas and myself want to show you the deployment process for a fully functioning SDC on the VMware Cloud and AWS platform. We actually had no idea what we were getting into when we started, but as you can see, we were pleasantly surprised as we got the deployment up and running. Let's actually get into it. We'll start from the VMware Cloud Services console and log in. We're using our organization's signal sign-on portal here, so once that's through, all we have to do is click open on the VMware Cloud and AWS console, and we'll be presented with the console screen. To create an SDC, it's as simple as clicking the Create SDC button. The first screen that we're presented with is the connection to an AWS account. So we're going to connect our account to a, an existing AWS account that we actually had to get set up as a part of this process. Now, as you can see, the create is in progress here. It will take some time to actually do. I mean, it didn't take more than five minutes to actually get to a state of the deployment being complete. However, you do have to give it a few seconds while it actually does that. As you can see, the create complete status is there. You can actually take a look at all of the other events that are also here. However, as long as it says create complete, we can actually continue with our progress. So what we're going to do is we're going to click back over to the VMware Cloud and AWS console, and then we can go next from this screen. Once we're on the SDC property screen, you have to select where you want to put it. So what AWS region? So that's the first drop down. We're going to select the US Oregon West. We're going to enter a name for our SDC. So in this case, you know, one that signifies our first SDC in our organization. You're going to enter the number of hosts. In this case, we have four hosts that we are going to be using. You know, shows the total capacity. And then we're going to be selecting the AWS cloud, because that's where we're going to be deploying this particular SDDC. We're going to click Next. The next step is to attach it to a VPC. So we're going to select the VPC and then the subnet that's appropriate for our VPC such that we can connect it to our AWS account. Once we're done, click Next. The next step is to enter a network range for the subnet that you want to deploy your SDC to. In this case, we actually specify an IP address range that was provided by our IT department. Once you're finished entering this, the next step actually is to just click Deploy SDC, and your deployment will start. Once the deployment has started, you can see one of the first tasks that it does is it deploys the ESXi hosts that are going to be a part of your cluster. Once this completes, it continues to configure the SDDC by deploying Virtual Center as well as the NSX configurations as specified during the deployment wizard. Now, for the sake of the brevity of this video, I'm not going to describe the entire process nor show the entire two hours that it took for us to deploy this SDDC. What I have left in the video is all the major tasks and milestones as the progress bar proceeds through the deployment process. One thing to note about the architecture that we use for the deployment is that it's an architecture that's been fully vetted by VMware architects to make sure that what we're doing is something that is not only supported, but is going to be something that will provide the best possible performance for the hosts that are a part of this cluster. Once the SDC has been deployed, you'll be able to see the newly deployed Software Divines data center on the home screen of your VMware Cloud and AWS console. To view the details, click the name of the SDDC. The first screen shows the capacity and usage details for your SDDC. Clicking over to the Network tab, you'll see the default configuration for networking that's been created as a result of your inputs on the wizard. If you click to the Add-ons tab, this shows the different add-ons that are available for your SDDC. In this case, the one that we see is Site Recovery, which we'll be talking about in a later video. Finally, we'll click over to the Connection Info tab. Now, this screen shows all the details for your vCenter configuration. 
On this page, you can see the connection info for both the vSphere client as well as the vCenter Server API Explorer, as well as your username and password that you'll be using to connect to the vCenter instance. In this case, because we have made no other configuration changes, if you copy the password and click the link, what you will see is you'll see that Virtual Center is not able to be connected to. You'll get a this site cannot be reached message. This may seem a bit confusing, but because we haven't configured any firewall rules, we're not going to be able to actually connect to the Virtual Center server. If you click back over to the VMware Cloud Native OS console and click the Open vCenter link, you're going to be presented with this menu, basically saying, hey, you don't have access to be able to connect to vCenter. So to be able to do this, you're going to have to configure either a firewall rule or a VPN to allow you to connect to this virtual center. Unfortunately, that's where I'm gonna leave you today. We will be doing our next video that will talk all about the networking configurations and different options that you have to connect to your vCenter server. So until then, I hope you guys have a good day and I'm looking forward to continuing this video series with you guys. Thanks so much.